What is up, Commanders fans? Welcome into Believe in Commanders. I'm one of your hosts, Brian Murphy, and as always, joined by AAA Anthony Armstrong. Uh, we're coming to you. We're recording on a Thursday, so almost the weekend. We are almost there. Football is right around the corner. AAA, how are you doing, my friend? I am good, Brian. I'm on my third cup of coffee. Woo! I'm wired up, man. I'm wired this up. It's going to be a little... good show. Yes, man. I, I got it up, man. I'm saving. This is a nice, perfect temperature. <laughs> Perfect temperature. Right. I mean, you can't usually bet on having perfect perfect temperature coffee, but you know what well, you, you can bet on. You can bet on bet online. So tell us about those guys and what we can do at Bet Online. Yes, indeed. Bet online. And I'll tell you what, you know, we're well into the football season, but you know what's back? Basketball. That's right. Basketball. Luka Doncic. He's out there. Uh, basketball is back, and Bet Online it remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. You'll always find the latest odds, team and matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports and events. Whether that's the NFL, NBA, uh, the Mavericks, NHL, MMA, <laughs> tennis, boxing, or even golf, head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. So make sure you use our promo code BELIEVE to receive your rewards. That is B L E A V to get those rewards. This is that 50% welcome bonus at Bet Online, where the game starts. That's right. And so where we are going to start some roster news for the commanders, not a whole lot to talk about there. Danny Johnson signed up from the practice squad. I think he's been available for a couple of games. And then maybe the the, the bigger move is uh, a move that they didn't make. They have not officially activated Chase Young. Sounds like they're taking it super slow. Sounds like he might practice next week, but you and I were just talking off air, but we, we feel like that's the right move. Yeah, there's no need to rush. And the way that the season's kind of worked out right now. There's they have the ability to kind of wait, and I, I don't think you should have rushed. You know, try to rush Chase Young back out there, anyways. Uh, but with the team actually being in the playoff hunt at this point, let's you know see if you can steady the ship and maybe get a couple of wins, and then have Chase Young be able to help push you into the playoffs. It's, it's not a bad idea. Yeah, and Taylor Heineke talks a little bit about how how big of a boost he will be, and uh, he's a bigger boost when he's healthy, so make sure he's fully healthy. You don't want to mess around with that at all, because like you said, you might need him down the stretch, and he will be a nice weapon to have uh, with some of these remaining games that you have coming up. So uh, exciting to potentially get him back. I'm glad they're not rushing it. We've seen them rush things before, and so no need to do that. Uh, make sure that he is good to go, and we will be excited to see number 99 out there when he's officially healthy. Absolutely. Uh, Cause he's going to be able to get back there and it's going to be exciting to see how he affects that team when he gets back. Just one, mm -hmm. his energy. Um, and then two, what he does on the field I mean, to be, to be quite frank, I think the defensive line has played pretty well, probably yeah. the best, uh, best unit on the defensive side of the ball. That's how they've been playing. So they're at, at the top uh, this season so far, definitely the MVPs. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've seen him cheering on the sidelines. I think he's been at every game home in a way. So it'll be nice to have him out there. I, th I feel like I've heard a lot of guys saying how much he means to them um, on the sideline, cheering them on. And you can only imagine what kind of impact he'll have once he's out there. And you're absolutely right. The defensive line, I think maybe not even the defense, but maybe over the overall best unit that we've seen so far this year. So it'll be exciting to have him out there. Yes, Meanwhile... Indeed. Meanwhile, the NFC East, they are making more moves than just activating a couple of guys or having a couple of guys return to practice. All three of the other teams made a deal this week. Uh, we were talking about it running uh, down, and these teams seem to be going for it and seem to be loading up, and uh, that's a scary thing to see. So we, we talked about uh, the Cowboys are adding rankings on the defensive line. Uh, the Eagles add Robert Quinn. The Giants get rid of uh, Kadarius Tony, send him to Kansas City. So a bunch of moves, a bunch of shaking and shifting in the NFC East. What are your thoughts on some of these moves and uh, these teams that are just look to be getting even better? Well, I tell you, if if you're listening to you know the, on TuneIn Radio, listening to the Believe Nation, you may get you may have heard from uh, Believe uh, the Believe station that covers the Cowboys, Jeff Kavanaugh. 
he's been pounding the table for a, a big big body in the middle of the defensive line for Dallas. And they must have been paying attention to his tweets because that's exactly what Jonathan Hankins is going to bring. Just somebody that's going to be stout inside to help slow down that running game. Um, you know, especially I mean, with what Washington's starting to do and what you'd like to see Washington do moving forward. And then what Philly does, Philly runs the hell out of that football. So it helps Saquon Barkley. You're going to have to deal with the running game in the NFC East and making that move to get in Jonathan Hankins from the Raiders very, very smart play and uh hat tip to Jeff Cavanaugh for calling that one. Yeah, absolutely. I think I said Rankins. I meant Jonathan Hankins, who a guy who's been around and absolutely is going to help an already scary defense get that much better. Same can be said for Robert Quinn. I think there were, were whispers of potentially the Bears moving on uh, or not moving on, but kind of trying to trade him, trying to get some pieces for him and of course, he goes to the Eagles. It seems like the Eagles always make these bargain deals. I think it only costs them a fourth round uh, pick or something like that. And they add another beast along their defensive line to go with Brandon Graham and Fletcher Cox and just another unit that is really solid getting that much better at the trade deadline. I think I cussed when I saw this come through. <laughs> I, and I, and I might have been in a place where I shouldn't have been, but I was like, God, dog it. The, the Eagles making this addition of Robert Quinn, former Cowboy, um, right. been in a lot of places throughout the league and has been successful throughout the league, former Ram. Uh, guy, He just gets to the quarterback. Doesn't matter where he's at. He gets to the quarterback, regardless of the helmet. Uh, Robert Quinn's a great player, and throw him into that mix, add him into that rotation, uh, that's just dangerous. And that just gives you two whole lineups of defensive line that are going to be able to get in there. Uh, so, I mean, hat tip to, to Philly. I mean, you got to give him some some uh, give him a little bit of love for making this play. Kind of feels like how the Rams did. You know, how the Rams did a few years ago. They just kept signing players. Uh, that feels like what's going on in Philly. Yeah, absolutely. A guy, Robert Quinn, who a couple of years ago had 18 and a half sacks. Uh, you mentioned he was with the Rams back in 2013. He had 19 sacks. So a guy that consistently gets double digit sacks and has flirted with 20. And of course, that's all the Eagles need is another playmaker on there. I'm with you. I, I think I was frustrated. I'm like, how do they keep getting away with this? Like somebody <laughs> stop them. Somebody swoop in and take them, take these players away from them. But you got to tip your cap to the Eagles. It's frustrating to say, but they they tend to make the really good moves that, that tend to really pay off. We talked about um, Chauncey Gardner Johnson that they, they they brought in right before the season started. So these 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 savvy you know wily moves that the Eagles keep making always pay off for them. So I fully expect Robert Quinn to make a couple of game changing plays for the Eagles. And then the Giants, who uh, already have a solid record, they're what six and one, and they've done it with basically nobody at the wide receiver position. And uh, one of their guys, their first round pick from last year, uh, Kadarius Tony, is on the move headed to Kansas City. A couple of uh, picks for him. Um, Seems like a win-win for both teams. Yeah, I think that was just a, definitely a mutual thing because all offseason you'd see his name splash. You'd be making some plays, see it on social media. You're like, okay, Kadarius Tony's he's coming around, he's catching on, and and then all of a sudden it's like trade rumors. You're like, man, what what happens? I mean, it's obviously covering trying to cover a team. We're just hearing news uh, mm -hmm. on the outside. You only get the headlines, and, you, and it's hard to understand. But I do think that he's going to have a a great you know, opportunity in Kansas City, a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, uh, Andy Reid, and uh, that offense, they're, they're able to just create space for players and, and get the most out of guys. And I think that I think he's going to enjoy some time in Kansas City. Yeah, and, and the Giants, I think they found something in Wandale Robinson, who's finally back healthy, a guy that they spent maybe a second or third round pick on. So, uh, you know, when when you're not drafted by a regime, it, it's even if you're a first round pick, you're not always safe. You know, you're, you're not one of their guys. And we kind of saw that. And um, so, yeah, I think it's the best of both uh, worlds for, for both teams. Uh, Patrick Mahomes gets a scary weapon to work with and the Giants get a couple of picks to uh, to go add to their future to an already solid team that, that Brian Dayball's. Uh, building there in New York. So all of the NFC East teams making some moves, uh, kind of gearing up for this season and beyond. Uh, the trade deadline is next week. So maybe we see how these games play out this weekend. I feel like we might see a couple more moves um, before the trade deadline comes and goes next week. Quick, quick little just minute GM. What would you move? And I, mean, I know we spoke about, I think we talked about this with Lake, but now that the trade deadline is right around the corner, like what, do you think 
would be something that you'd consider trying to make a trade for? What would you move? Is it picks? If you try to go grab a player. What do you, what would you do? I, as much as I, I want to believe in the Taylor Heineke show and that this could get righted and that they are in the playoff hunt, I still think you need to be a, a cautious, um, uh, take a cautious approach. I don't think you need to mortgage anything and go pick up a guy. I think if anything, you move a guy and it, it pains me to say literally that Duran Payne would be the move that I would make. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't really have a plan in place to sign him long-term, which I hope that they break him off and I would love to see him stay in DC, but uh, I just don't see that happening. Then you got to go get something for him. And I think that you can send him to a contender, an actual contender and get some, uh, you know, a second, third round pick, something like that. I think you got to do that to help build up this team in the future. And as much as that hurts you now and losing a, a talent like Deron Payne, we know that that's where you kind of have your best depth. And we've, we already talked briefly about how this is the best unit on the de defensive side of the ball. You know, take from your strength, help out another team and, and potentially stockpile up for the future. So that one hurts to say, but I think you got to look at moving a guy like Deron Payne. Hey, so you're saying be a seller. Be a yeah, seller. yeah. I, I mean, I, I, the deadline. You're, you're three and four. Maybe you're four and four by the end of the week. But you're you're maybe looking at the six or seven seed. As much as exciting as that is, I think you can still move a couple of pieces potentially, and kind of set yourself up to to still make a little run this season. So mm -hmm. I, I think it I think it helps you in the long run, but also uh, could get you something um, down the line. Uh, that that's just me though. All right, I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at that. that I just want to make sure you weren't mad at me. I felt like I was getting yelled at. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just a little impromptu. Thing. I mean, Deron Payne's having a hell of a hell of yeah. a year, and, and his stock is definitely going up. So, I mean, a, a, a team that would make a trade for for Deron Payne right now is somebody who is would probably be trying to get you know, they're trying to get in front of the line uh, yep. to be able to try to get get in on that uh, free agency, and, uh, you know, with him. So uh, that mean it makes sense. It would make sense. Yes, it definitely would hurt the team, but hey, it could be best for but it could be best for everybody, and especially if somebody's willing to pay uh, pay a premium just to just to be able to talk to him first and have those rights, uh, could be worth doing. Let's let's say I'm gonna flip it back around on you. Let's say the Commanders decide you know they get a big win here in Indy. They're four and four. They're arguably right there at the seven C. They decide they're gonna go for a little bit. Who, what position, maybe not even a specific player, but what position would you look to potentially add if you could get a, a guy for a late round pick? Well, see, that's the my my only issue is what level of impact are you going to get? Now, yeah, I think Robert Quinn is is definitely a hell of a player. You know, mm -hmm. was it a fourth round pick or fifth or sixth, maybe so. So something wasn't too high, but it didn't feel like it was a, a high pick, but. He's a very impactful player, so yeah. it's it's tough to say. I mean, I, obviously, I think we've been harping on linebacker. Uh, we've been harping on uh, some people maybe in the secondary. I feel like with Cam Curl back, that seems to be kind of settled down uh, a little bit, but I also don't see anybody just getting rid of a, a premier cornerback when you right. have him in this type of a league. So those would be the, the, the main ones. Other than that, it'd be linemen, but once again, quarterback heavy league, I don't really see – you know, people kind of getting rid of that. So uh, it'd probably be somebody in that linebacker position. If there was a guy out there that, you know, would would be a potential target, I'd, I'd, I'd go for linebacker. Yeah, me too. I would hopefully maybe find a guy that's disgruntled on a team that is underachieving and maybe you could swoop in there and take him. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I, it wouldn't surprise me either way to see this team make a move, whether it be uh, a, a buy low or, or sell a guy while he's high right now. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, this time next week, how all the teams look as they, uh, it feels like the trade has kind of come back in the NFL. Like it, it, these are, these are, this is a legitimate tool that, that teams will use and make where for a long time, it felt like you never really saw guys on the move. So teams realize that they can go for it in season, similar to a basketball or a baseball move. So it's interesting to see how the front offices kind of have kind of readopted the trade in the NFL. Yeah. I feel like draft picks, uh, the, Sean McVay almost made it was like F them draft picks. Right. Like, forget them. Like, and, and if you look at it, a team would much rather have a Super Bowl or have a championship uh, and then have 10 years of futility, but they got their one um, rather than kind of a slowly work your way up. I mean, it's worth it now, especially what I like to see, though. I do love seeing that 
uh, guys are able to get paid in year three. Like the guys mm-hmm. that have deserved it. That makes the most sense to me. Pay those guys in, that contract ends, and then they either are continuing to ascend or they're probably, uh, you know, they get, get to the age where they may be kind of falling off a little bit. Then, you know, they can get a contract that's uh, more appropriate for the production at that time. So uh, I like the way the league is going. Uh, mm-hmm. Wish I was playing in it, but it's all good. Yeah. Well, and it's tough for the commanders. You know, you, you and most teams that are sitting right there at 500 probably have a shot at their division. Right now, realistically, that's not the case for the commanders. I think I saw that this is the best the NFC has been doing um, this far into the season since 20, uh, since 2002, I think. So it's been 20 years since the NFC East has been this good. And so it kind of makes it tough on a team like the commanders, who is by far the you know last in their division, might be playing some good football right now but it makes it tough if you want to be a buyer or seller how realistic is the division how realistic is the playoffs so it's it's intriguing it'll be interesting to see how some of these teams maneuver this trade deadline uh with this this the middle of the season coming up yeah i mean i'm i'm like i said before i believe in winning just me too too. try to find a way to win because it it sucks to just go through a losing um, and especially losing on purpose so you know and you got to act like you're trying to do something I don't like that. I say yeah. you just try to win. It hasn't worked for the it hadn't worked in the past however long to say let's just suck so bad that we're always picking up front and then we're going to get the one guy that turns it all around. It doesn't yeah. usually turn around like that. Well, and and you know, we hope that Chase Young is going to come back and be a force, but you know, you got the second all second overall pick a couple of years ago. You know, one play can change all that to where you think you have a game record, you think you have a difference maker, and then uh, all of a sudden he's out of the lineup, and then you're like, well, shoot, we we tanked or, you know, whatever it is to get that high draft pick, and it's not working out so far. So I'm with you. Go win. Go make something happen. But, you know, if you're going to make a move, don't mortgage your future by any means. So we'll, we'll see what the, what the commanders do, what other teams do. But this Sunday, they have a winnable game. They are headed to Indy with the chance to take down the Colts to move back to 500 what a what a turn of events in the last you know 10 days or so you know it was doom or gloom doom and gloom going into Chicago you got an ugly win you back that up with beating Aaron Rodgers and now you got a chance to beat an inexperienced quarterback to get back to 500 and that's where the commanders are heading to Indy not to face Matt Ryan not bringing Carson Wentz in for a revenge game it's Taylor Heineke it's Sam Ellinger Initial thoughts on on this matchup and and how can Washington get a, a win here and get to five hundred and maybe have the rest of the the season in front of them? Uh, they got to keep with that same momentum, yep. same momentum, same recipe, same things you guys have been doing. Uh, run the ball, control the clock. You know, just play nice, clean football. I think that you're getting a team. Yeah, with Sam Ellinger, obviously you don't have that same veteran leadership as a Matt Ryan, but you do have a different type of weapon that you're facing. I mean, he does. He will run the ball on you. Know, he will mm-hmm. move with his feet. So linebackers have to be sound. Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis, those guys still have to be about their business. Uh, even the defensive line you can't just rush all the way up and around. You've already you know had to deal with the quarterbacks that can run. So he's going to bring that that uh, capability to the game. But I mean, I think this team is what last in the league in rushing. I mean, you're, you're really hurting when you don't have Jonathan Taylor out there, yeah. uh, but you know, they don't have the biggest, they don't have the, the most talented receivers. They have a couple of good, good receivers, you know, young tight ends, but this is definitely a matchup where it's like, Hey, if you come out here and you jump on this team, I think that they will, they may, they may lay down for you and then you can just go, you know, just finish this game out and just go home with a win. Yeah, kind of watching Sam Ellinger, not that we have a whole lot of tape on him, but it kind of reminds me of of Taylor Heineke. Like, I feel like he's going to take what is there. If he needs to step up and run, he can. Um, But I I think that you have the more athletic quarterback here between the two of them and Taylor Heineke. I think his legs will be a a big part of it on the offensive side. And yeah, I'm with you. I think last week the, the commanders played such a great game on defense. They didn't for the most part, let Aaron Rodgers kind of extend a play or, you know, make a, a, a throw that we've seen him do on the run or that kind of thing. So I think you have to play that sound defense that you've been playing. Look out for Jonathan Taylor. I think that he um, probably is looking to get going. And so you don't want that to be against you. So play sound uh, everywhere. And I, I think I'm with you. I think if you can jump on this team early, you can make hopefully make them roll over and make the the crowd get frustrated thinking that this team is waving the white flag because that's kind of been the talk that you know the the Colts are in a bad division uh, uh, unlike the commanders they they are you know what three and 
three, three and one or something like that. And so they, they've got a chance in their division. And and some people have been saying that Frank Reich was kind of waving the white flag by going to Sam Ellinger. So if you can get them frustrated early, uh, I like your chances here. And maybe, um, you know, the thing that's still been lacking is that big turnover and maybe the uh, commanders can force a couple of those for Sam Ellinger. Yeah. And you know, you're dealing, you're dealing with some playmakers on the defensive side of the ball too. So, it's paramount that the offense does take care of the ball because yeah. when you're, when you're dealing with, you know, a young quarterback scrappy guy that likes to make plays with his feet, similar to Taylor Heineke, if you let them hang around long enough, they can sneak you with one. You don't want this game to be one of those ones where it's like 10 to six or 14, you know, 10 and, and it gets late. And now you're trying to have some, uh, you know, gunslinger from Texas uh, trying to be a, a, you know, a hero. That's not what you want. You need to be able to jump on these guys. I mean, you got Stefan Gilmore over there in Indy. This season is not going the way that Indianapolis would have thought, uh, you know, especially with all those acquisitions uh, on defense. Definitely not the way you saw this thing going. Yeah, for sure. They, they probably thought that they were – uh, one of the top dogs, in, at least in their division, and you know, bringing in Matt Ryan, they were probably expecting to compete uh, for some bigger and better things than where they're at right now. So, uh, kind of an interesting. You can almost see they're almost like mirror images of each other, right? The the Commanders and the the Colts. Maybe not. Uh, maybe the Commanders didn't have as lofty expectations, but they both bring in a veteran quarterback, hoping that that will be uh, a piece that can kind of turn them around and. Here we are in in week eight, and neither of those guys are playing. So it is it, it you know it is a week to week league, and that's that's proven here with this matchup. I mean, even a couple of weeks ago, we weren't expecting to see Taylor Heineke versus Sam Ellinger. So you're always one play away, and it'll be interesting which team shows up and which team kind of rolls with the punches that they've been dealing with so far this season. You didn't have it on your bingo card. You I know, have, no, I did not. You didn't have the four for four matchup going on. You didn't have that out there, Man. no. I, I thought, I you know, you know, Taylor Heineke and Matt Ryan faced off uh, in Atlanta last year. And so when when uh, Carson Wentz went down, I was kind of looking ahead. I was like, oh, that's going to be a rematch. And then all of a sudden we get the news after the games last week that Matt Ryan's not even playing. So it's a it is definitely a carousel. You, it's a merry go round. You got to you got to hold on to your spot and hold on to it tight or it could be gone just like that. Yeah, it is what it is. But hey. It'll be good. It'll be it'll be a good matchup for the team. Definitely a good yeah. matchup for Washington. One one guy I am a little bit nervous about is Michael Pittman. He uh, he can make plays no matter who his quarterback is. We already talked about Jonathan Taylor. Um, they got a nice, solid, young offense. I think that's probably why it's been frustrating for the Colts and Colts fans. But Michael Pittman is a, is a playmaker. Alec Pierce, the rookie, has kind of come along. You mentioned the tight end, so they've got some playmakers to where it. it it shouldn't be too hard for Sam Ellinger to find those guys. You just got to make it tough and make him make bad decisions. But if Michael Pittman can get the the ball rolling, that can be a little bit scary. And they're those are they're big receivers. Yeah, they're big players. I mean, so it's like size difference. I mean, B- Benjamin St. Juice is what six one, uh, six one, six two, something like that. So he's yeah. going to definitely have to match up size for size. Uh, but you're dealing with big receivers. They're going to be able to go up and over the top. They're going to challenge you to throw the ball. They're going to challenge you by throwing the ball downfield and trying to use that height you know, height advantage to go on those 50-50 balls. So uh, definitely going to be a physical matchup. I mean, I want to see you know somebody bring a little bit of a little Ron Landry energy to yeah. this secondary. I mean, you know, Cam Curl, you, if you go way back, I remember the game. Washington versus Dallas in Dallas. And I think it might have been a Monday night. Laurent Robinson went up the sideline, and Laurent Landry knocked his helmet off right on the sideline. That's broke right. the pass up. Need some of that energy. Need some yeah. of that type of uh, attitude out of the secondary. Um, you're going up against some big body receivers. You're going to have to get physical to separate them from the football. So uh, we need somebody to step up. Yeah. So if you had to kind of give, uh, we've mentioned a few names here for both the offense and defense. If you kind of had to give your X factor, a guy on the commanders that you think can really sway or change this game, who would you kind of tip your cap to there? Uh, defensively, I'm going to say Cam Curl. I'll go right back to where I was at. Uh, sure. I think his, his ability to have a presence in the box uh, against the run and help stopping the run is going to be huge because it's going to force them to throw the ball with Sam Ellinger, uh, you know, doesn't have as many snaps and have as much experience as Matt Ryan. 
but him being able to roam and roam the skies and be physical with these pass catchers as well, just having that physical presence is going to make Indianapolis really think twice uh, about just going across the middle and affect that game play. So Cam Curl is going to be a guy for me to pay attention to. I'm going to flip over to the offensive side of the ball. I think that he was so clutch, and if it hadn't been for Terry's long touchdown and how solid the running game looked, um, he he might have been maybe the play, underrated player of the game, and that was Curtis Samuel. I think that he has a, a big weekend. I think that the uh, Indianapolis defense is going to zone in on Terry McLaurin, whether it's uh, Stephon Gilmore or you know, just a couple extra eyes on Terry McLaurin. That's going to allow – Curtis Samuel to, to make some plays underneath. We saw him have enough, uh, a couple of nice catch and runs, a, a third down catch or two. So I think that he might get into the end zone, Curtis Samuel, and I think that he could be a big part in what the uh, commanders try to do and, and try to keep this offense rolling. Because I, I think last week was a good start, and I think they can build upon that and really keep it going this week. Yeah, and the O line has a matchup, a pretty tough matchup as well. I mean, Shaquille Leonard, you know, on defense, uh, DeForest Buckner is he is he healthy? Yeah. I think Buckner's healthy, so you know, it's a solid, solid defense that you're going up yeah. against. I mean, this has been uh, a very talented defense. That's, I mean, this defense has basically got you know the Bears head coach Matt Eberflus. Uh, he kept that defense ranked highly in the league. I think they're ninth uh, in the league right now. So. Very good defense, talented defense. It's going to be a, definitely going to be a challenge, but nothing that can't be uh, overcome. Yeah, they're not. They're the team is not going to roll over. You can try to put them down behind, but this team, you know, they have a they still have a lot to play for. So I'm with you. Mm -hmm. um, we will pick this game later on with the rest of our picks. So stay tuned on the video to watch this. Otherwise, we'll post it as a separate episode. Uh, but any any lasting thoughts as we as we head into Week Eight uh, for the Commanders and what they have to do here to get back to 500. You know, is it, to me, it's just it just gets back to basics. You know, you're staying with the same same type of vibe. I think you know everybody's probably you know pretty excited to get they got Taylor back in there. He's gonna bring his energy. He's gonna bring his fire. And you got a little afternoon game, so you know all eyes are on you just about. So you're gonna get to put put on a little bit of a show. Put on a little bit of a show. Don't try to do too much, but just go put on a show and you put out you put out a good effort. This should be a W for the for for the boys in Burgundy. Yeah, I'm with you. I feel like this is a big game. It feels like it, it. I feel like I hope they're not looking at it like it's too too easy of a game. But I really do feel like, think that this is a game that they can go out there and win, and and they should win, and they can uh, really build some more momentum, get a third win in a row, and then you never know what can happen down the second half of the season. Yeah, they're three point dogs now. You shoot, this is yeah, this is, yeah. You're a three point dog. That is not anything about being a favorite at all. You know, so. It's it's a tough battle, but I think I think they'll be okay. And, and look out for the uh, the uh, rumble down on the the field before the game. If Jim Irsay and Dan Snyder meet meet up, we know the the headlines with those two guys. So a lot of a lot of storylines going into this one. You know, you you, you thought you're going to see two former uh, you know MVP candidates, guys like that, and Carson Wentz and Matt Ryan said it's Taylor Heineke and it's Sam Ellinger for two teams that desperately want to win to keep going in the right direction. So it'll be a fun one. Uh, we'll break it all down next at the beginning. The next week win or loss so we appreciate you joining us in kind of talking about what's going on in the nfc east and the commanders as they head into indy and remember you can always watch this on or on youtube once we post the video but also listen to us on tune in and sirius xm and as always we're brought to you by bet online yes indeed we will see you on the next one all right. If you're sticking with us, we're going to go ahead and do our picks now. As always, our picks uh, brought to you by Bet Online. You can use our code Believe B L E A V. You can bet on football. You can bet on MLB. All of that good stuff. Anthony, tell them what else you can do on Bet Online. Bet on basketball. You can bet That's on right. basketball. Basketball is back, and uh, Ben Simmons is back. He's on the court, so you can bet on him too. It's your number one source for all your betting needs this season. You're going to will he shoot? Guys. Yes or no? You can bet on that. I, I honestly, I bet that's a, 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 a an odd. That is a prop bet for sure. You can get your team matchup info. You can find player news uh, and game trends at Bet Online. And as your continued source for all your sports wagering information, Bet Online features live betting, free contests, and giveaways all season long. It's also the place where you can play your AAA parlay. Always the fastest and easiest way to bet your all uh, bet all your favorite sports and events, whether that's the NFL, NBA, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, or even golf. So head to betonline.ag to join and receive your 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. So make sure you use the promo code BELIEVE 
to receive your rewards. That's B-L-E-A-V to receive those rewards. Bet online where the game starts. And so we are recording this on Thursday where the NFL weekend starts on uh, Prime Video. Uh, we got the Ravens versus the Bucks. What are we thinking there is the Bucks are I'm kind of surprised by this. The Bucks are a two point favorite in this one. Uh, what do we think happens in this one between uh, Lamar Jackson and Tom Brady? You know, the two point favorites, it seems it seems weird. It's almost like you have teams that are going in two different directions. You have right. uh, the Bucks who are, who are just losing to teams that just aren't that good. And then you've got the Ravens who are making some games way more exciting than they probably need to be. Uh, I'm I'm gonna hang with Lamar Jackson in this one. I just think his athleticism is more than enough to get you know to get this win. I think they can win this game. I think they cover. I think they win. Um, the over under they probably take the over is 46. I'd take that too. Shoot. Yeah, this game is interesting to me. I I, I find it hard to to see either of these teams losing this game, which it makes it intriguing to me. So I got to think that the Bucks aren't gonna drop another one but man lamar is i just give me the bucks whatever give me the give me the favorite give me the bucks on a short week i think they they do enough tom brady plays angry and they do just enough to win i think that too is is interesting because i think they win only by about a field goal so give me the bucks in this one already okay. different from the start there uh so then an espn plus game exclusive not that I don't know. I don't know why I said that, but it's interesting all the places that the NFL is being played this year. But ESPN Plus exclusively has this game between the Broncos and the Jaguars in London, where the Jaguars are a two point favorite. Uh, what do you think about Russell Wilson? Sounds like he's going to play against the Jags, who had a tough loss last week to the Giants. Um, I'm going to continue to ride with the Jags. I'm going to roll with those guys. Denver, I think they're just scrapping and clawing. If Brett, if, if Brett Rippon would have got that win, um, he'd have still been starting. So, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go with the Jags. I think that it doesn't matter, you know, if, uh, Russell Wilson is back under the helm. I think that the Jags got it. I think they're a good team. I do. I think that they're solid. They're definitely on the upswing. I do too, and I think that they realize they have a serious weapon in Travis Etienne, so they dealt James Robinson. I think we're going to see a lot of Travis Etienne. Uh, give me the Jags as well. Um, I don't I don't see how the Broncos win this game. So, yeah, give me the Jags as well in London. Uh, an NFC South uh, showdown, I guess you can call it. It's the Panthers at the Falcons. The Falcons are a four-point favorite. Sounds like it's going to be P.J. Walker again going up against Marcus Mariota. Um, I like the Falcons here. I think that they win pretty handedly, uh, taking down the Panthers at home. I'm going to take Carolina because that that last week or whatever they did the other week that was impressive. Against, yeah, against yeah, the Bucks. I'm just, I mean, I'm just going to just take a shot in the dark, and I'm going to take Carolina because um, PJ Walker and you know interim head coach Steve Wilkes, right? They yeah, uh, they're doing all right. So I mean. I say they're doing all right. They're still not an awesome team, but I think they can get a win. I think they can – at least they can cover this four. I think our colleague Jonathan Stewart said that they are going to make the playoffs, which I – my jaw about hit the floor when I saw that on the Believe socials. So he's, yeah, he's yeah, a believer yeah. in, in what they're doing. You know, they're not rolling over. As we saw, they, they whooped up on the Bucks last week. So that's not a bad pick there. I'm just going to go with my hometown Fal Falcons in this one. No, man. Next Next up, the Bears at the Cowboys. Bears with a solid Monday night win against the Patriots. Dak Prescott was back for the Cowboys last week. Cowboys a nine-point favorite. That is a hefty number. I think they get there. I think the Cowboys win this one handedly. What about you, Triple A? You know, um, initially I thought it was a short week game. It, it, it's short-ish for um, it's short for Chicago. I do think that Dallas will end up being too much in the long run. I do. It, it may be a slow burner, uh, but I do think they can push it uh, uh, over that nine late. Okay. Uh, the Dolphins are going to the Lions. Dolphins a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Um, Lion, man, the Commanders are going to look back at this season, whatever, whatever happens, whichever way it goes, and they're going to see how big of a letdown that week two loss to the Lions was. I, I really, I really feel that way. So they're going to be like, man, we could have had one more win. It could have been, it could be the difference between getting the playoffs or not. Um, but the Lions have just been an absolute mess since beating the Commanders. Um, that's why I'm going to take the Dolphins. I think Tua Tungavailoa has a huge day going to Hill and Waddle all day long. So give me the dolphins in Detroit. 
inside fast track with the couple of the fastest receivers yeah. in the league. Yeah, absolutely. I'm rolling with Miami. Um, I'm rolling with Miami. I, I, I think that they'll be able to gash up that blitz. Like they're gonna get they're gonna get those guys out of that blitz so quick because they're gonna probably get a quick 21 points off of it. Yeah, it, it's insane that those two guys, Hill and Waddle, are both top five in receiving yards, and they've done it with three different quarterbacks, with uh, Tua being out, Teddy being out. Uh, so, yeah, they're impressive, and I think they get clicking once again. So give me the Dolphins big in that one. Uh, an NFC matchup, the Cardinals at the Vikings. The Cardinals got to see what life was like with DeAndre Hopkins back, got him involved pretty early and pretty often, going to the Vikings, who I think are coming off a bye, but the Vikings a three-and-a-half-point favorite. Who are you taking there? I, I like that DeAndre Hopkins is back. Love him as a player. Me too. But uh, Minnesota, I think they're still rolling. Just because they're coming off of a bye, I don't think that they have much of a hiccup. Maybe a drive or two. Uh, but I think that they're going to be okay. So Minnesota with the W. Give me Minnesota. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Vikings as well. I feel like they can run the ball really well, and then they can just get uh, Justin Jefferson involved as much as they would like to. So, yeah, give me the Vikings, although I think the Cards might be starting to figure some things out and could be a, a force down the stretch with Hopkins back. The Raiders, a one-point favorite going to New Orleans. It sounds like Jameis Winston is healthy, but Dennis Allen is rolling with Andy Dalton. Does that affect your pick? What are you thinking in this one where the Raiders – it's basically a toss-up here. The Raiders are a one-point favorite. You know, I was – I was I was gonna roll with uh, with Vegas. I just kind of had a just just kind of felt like I wanted to take those guys in this one. So I'm going with Vegas. I mean, hey, roll the dice. I am going to go with the Saints. Maybe it's just being at home. Maybe it's that I don't think Andy Dalton will throw back to back pick sixes again this week. Um, so give me the Saints in a close one at home to win this one. Um, okay, so a uh, an AFC East matchup. The pa uh, the Pats are a two and a half point favorite going to the surprise Jets, uh, who just picked up James Robinson as another weapon for Zach Wilson and company with a couple of their running backs going down. Uh, Pats, I'm kind of surprised they're a two and a half point favorite. I feel like the Jets on paper are the better team, but maybe they're kind of giving the hat tip to Bill Belichick. Um, give me the Jets in this one. I'm going to take the upset. I think the Jets win at home. I am taking that same bet. I think James Robinson is going to fit in perfectly. Yeah. I think he's going to hit the ground running. He might get 100 yards this game. Uh, it, it's just one of those things I feel like what they got going on, running back in one of those positions, it, that if if it's there, you can see it, you can hit the hole, and it's, it, it should translate well. But that's a solid team. Robert Sala has those guys going in the right direction. So give me the Jets as well. And and how about Sauce Gardner? Gardner he might be a top-five cornerback seven games into his career. I mean, that guy is impressive, and he's already making plays. Yes, indeed. He's, he is savvy, and just uh, he's just so under control. He's, he's yeah. a good player. Yep. All right, uh, Battle of Pennsylvania, the Steelers at the Eagles. Eagles a 10.5-point favorite. Um, I want to believe that Mike Tomlin's going to get these guys juiced up. Maybe they hang around early, but I think that the Eagles really have no problem in this one. I think even with that big number, uh, they win it by a couple touchdowns. The defense is just going to be too much, man. Mm -hmm. Every time you look at at the Steelers tape, you see Kenny Pickett running around. Is not that's not that's not the recipe against this these these ball. I would say ball hawks, but they're ball, ball eagles. eagles. But, yeah. So uh, yeah, that yeah. Give me Philly. Give me Philly. They're going to cover that. All right. The Commanders at the Colts. We we broke this one down in our last episode. Obviously, a Believe in Commanders podcast. Colts a three-point favorite at home. I feel like you get three points just by being the home team. And I feel like they're they're Vegas might not know what to do with this one with Heineke versus Ellinger. So maybe they just give the home team the advantage. But I think the commanders are riding hot, and I think that they uh but you know, maybe technically it's an upset, but I think the commanders win this one. I'm with you on that one, and this is not being a homer at all. This is just the fact that, I mean, you got a team that's rolling rolling pretty well. I think Washington is in a good spot. So, yeah, give me Washington uh, for the W. I think they're going to be a, a, a good offensive game for them. Me too. Me too. I think that that's huge for them. I think it'll be nice to get the offense rolling, get it going in the right direction. So another AFC uh, South matchup. The Colts obviously are in the AFC out. AFC South. The Titans, a two and a half point favorite, going to Houston to face the Texans. 
Um, interesting one here. I could see the Texans pulling the upset, but I just feel like the Titans are going to lean on Derrick Henry and kind of put this one away. Yeah, I think it's Tennessee. They're, they've finally kind of got things going where it needs to be going uh, downhill uh, in, in a good way with Derrick Henry. So, yes, give me Tennessee as well. I'm going with the human bulldozer. All right. Uh, another divisional matchup, the 49ers going to the Rams. The 49ers are one-point favorite. The Rams kind of seem to be all over the place. I think their record is okay. or are they, I think they're three and four, something like that, uh, four and three, something like that. But uh, the Rams at home are an underdog. What do you think Sean McVay does in this one? He going to pull out all the stops, <laughs> fake fake punts, or anything, just to get this W. But um, – I think they're going to take a loss. I think I'm going to ride with the 49ers in this one. I think Sean McVay does his best. He scratches claws, uh, but doesn't make it happen. So I I am going to go with the Rams. I think they try to get back on track. They had a bye week. Um, I I think they they might be starting to feel the disrespect, and I think they want to make make an example out of Kyle Shanahan. So I'm going to take the Rams, even though I don't feel great about it. I just got to think that they're going to play better than what they've done so far this year. Um, Two surprising teams going at it in the Pacific Northwest. The Giants going to the Seahawks, where Geno Smith is a three-point favorite. What do we think in this NFC showdown? This is a matchup of two powerhouses that we did not expect to be powerhouses, y'all. I yeah. mean, five, six and one, and then four and three. These two teams. I mean, that it's crazy. I, I, I think that your your point of saying you get three points just by being the home team. Uh, I feel like that's a play right now. But I mean, traveling to Seattle is tough. Playing in Seattle is tough. You have to travel early. Um, I feel like I want to pick the Giants. I really want to pick the Giants, but I'm going to go with Geno Smith. I'm going to go with the Seattle Seahawks because that defense is moving again. They, they're looking like a min- miniature version of the old Legion of Boom. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think the, the home field advantage is quite the same as it used to be in Seattle, but I do think it's a factor, and that is the reason that I'm going with the Seahawks as well. I think that that probably um, that might be the game of the, the weekend. Which where, When did you think that the Giants and the Seahawks would be a fun game to watch? So uh, I like what Geno Smith is doing. Um, I like what Kenneth Walker the third is doing. That offense is pretty fun to watch, and Maybe it was Russell Wilson all along. I hate to say it. But anyway, uh, I'll take the Seahawks as well. Uh, Then we head into the Sunday night game. This probably, you know, on paper you would think would be the game of the weekend, but the Packers do not look good. And it shows here, you know, what Vegas thinks of them. The Bills, an 11-point favorite at home against an Aaron Rodgers-led Packers team. It's wild to say that, but it doesn't seem far off. Uh, What do we think in this one? 11 points just seems it just seems disrespectful but it, i think it's very accurate the, that team is the buffalo team buffalo they're too good man they're yeah. so good very very talented team especially the connection that josh allen has with both of his receivers uh, gabe davis and stefan diggs you can easily say that they could cover this 11 uh, i just don't think that green bay has enough on offense to deal with that defense as well yeah i was gonna say i don't think the firepower is there for the packers um, I, I think Aaron Rodgers, he's probably not going to turn the ball over. I mean, I think the Bills could potentially do it. I just, you know, Aaron Rodgers never turns the ball over. I just think they don't have enough to get it done. Um, so, yeah, give me the Bills. It's crazy to say that I think an Aaron Rodgers-led team might lose by two touchdowns, but I think that might happen here. And it's, it's no fault to him. No. I mean, he might throw one, but I just think that Josh Allen, Josh Allen, you, you know the Josh Allen, uh, Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, just how they could just throw it a country yep. mile and then yep. just run up underneath it. It's almost looking like that way uh, with Josh Allen. Just He just throws it out there, and somebody's going to eventually get there. Yeah, wow. It's a beautiful thing to see. Speaking of those two, you thought that the uh, Believe Fantasy League might catch up to old team commanders with both Josh Allen and Stephon Diggs on a bye. Not so fast, my friend. Five and two, and we get those guys back, so we're going to keep it rolling. And so just as much as the Bills love that duo, we love that duo, and we're going to keep it rolling hopefully to a six win. So got to give a shout-out to our fantasy guys getting the job done. Um, my one fantasy team that is doing well, so I'm gonna ride high on that one. Mine um, too. I didn't do. I didn't do fantasy in this year. I didn't do it this year. I was like, I, I was like, I can't 
I got to keep the house put together, man. I can't even yeah. try to keep a fantasy team together. Shoot. That's right. Well, we're, we're doing well there, so we, we can hang our hat on that. Now, if the real commanders can heat up, man, we're going to be unstoppable here soon. Um, and finally, the Monday night game, an AFC North affair. The Bengals, who look to be clicking after a couple of big wins. Jamar Chase finally getting involved. The Browns, who are scrappy, just can't get it done. But the Bengals, a three-and-a-half-point favorite on the road in Cleveland. What do you think there in the Monday night showdown? Man, it's on Halloween. Two teams. Ooh, I didn't born. think about that whole bunch of jack-o'-lanterns and spooky things going on out there. Um, I'm going to say this. I think the Cincinnati wins. I'm going to take Cleveland to cover because it's at three and a half. So that gives me that extra, that half a point to make this a field goal thing. So uh, I'm going to take Cleveland to cover. It's going to be a weird game, though. I, I think it'll be weird, too, but I think when it's all said and done, the Bengals get the job done. I think that they're rolling, they're clicking, and they realize that the Ravens the Ravens and them you know, have not been playing well, and yet they're both right there for the division lead like we all thought. So I think the Bengals um, get this one done and uh, have the division lead by the end of the weekend. Yeah, I think so. Wait, no, I don't think so with that. I'm sorry. I think that Cleveland wins. I think you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. So we'll be getting back from trick or treat and see what happens there as I'm getting personally attacked by my co host here. Yeah, my um, bad. <laughs> no, but I, I, it is interesting, though. You know, we, I think we all thought it would be the Ravens and the Bengals in that division, and it still is, but neither team has been really impressive. And so we're still kind of waiting for both of these teams to kind of assert. Uh, their dominance. And so I'm with you. I could see the Browns totally pulling the upset here. I just think the Bengals are going to ride their, their hot streak and get it done. Yeah. I mean, I could see that, but weird things happen. And plus miles Garrett's going to have all his quarterback tombstones in his oh, yard. Gosh, and, you're right. You know what I mean? He's going to be walking in there looking like the undertaker. Um, but I went, I was I actually went and p- pulled up the standings. Um, talking about Jonathan Stewart over there on the believe in the Panthers, believe in Panthers. So nobody in the NFC South is above 500. Yeah. Three and four, three and four are the Bucks and the Falcons. And then you got the Panthers and Saints tied at two and five. I mean, he, they could easily, I mean, easily, they could win the division. They well, could make their way up there. Well, P- the Panthers have already beaten the Bucks, who have a potential losable game. So let's say the Bucks drop the three and five tonight on Thursday night. Panthers beat the Falcons. That puts them ahead of the Falcons as well. And you very well could see the Panthers at three and five leading the division by the end of yeah. this weekend. Yeah, they are two and zero oh in the division right now. So wild. Uh, two and zero. Oh, Bucks are two one and zero, oh, and the Falcons are zero oh and two in the division. So yeah, they lost Saints the opener to the Saints and. Oh, yeah, the Grady Jarrett roughing the passer against Tom Brady. Ugh. Um, yeah, so that NFC South is ugly, but, hey, it doesn't matter how you win it. Get it, get the division one, and you get a home playoff game. You never know what can happen there. Yeah, exactly. Just get in the tournament. Was that? A, I think that was Bill Parcells. He said, just get in the tournament, give yourself a chance, and you never know what can happen there. Exactly. Sorry, I'm yawning. My coffee is wearing I'm, off. I'm, no, I'm bored by the NFC South, too. I, I live right near here, so it's pretty boring <laughs> to watch. <laughs> Well, no offense to those guys. Uh, but yeah, so a big slate of, of games. We're going to start to see teams kind of separate themselves here uh, as we're about halfway through the season. Not technically halfway because 17 games. So halfway through week nine is technically the halfway point. But week eight, we're going to see some some teams start to make some cases for themselves for the second half of the season. It'll be fun to watch. You can bet all of these games at betonline.ag. Use our code BELIEVE. And if they wanted to put in the AAA parlay, what is that? We're not leaving until we hear the AAA Ooh, parlay. I was yes, wrapping up, but yes, what is our AAA parlay? AAA parlay, all right. So you know, you've been sticking. Still, uh, I've uh, been sticking with the afternoon games, right, and, right, right. And none of the afternoon games had 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 involved our commanders. So, um, and that's fine. That's just the way that the cookie crumbles. But this week here, my AAA parlay, we're going. I will take Washington to cover. I okay. Think Washington can cover. Um, I'm going to, I feel like I need to leave that Seattle game alone um, because I think that uh, it's not, it's really, oh, that San Francisco game is another one. That's a tough matchup, too. Man, tough triple A parlay today. Okay, here we go. Triple A parlay. I'm going to go Washington. I'll go Seattle and then I'll go 
San Francisco to get that uh, to cover that as well. So those would be my three. All right, Seahawks, 49ers, and Commanders, the AAA parlay. It's the best deal you can make, and you can bet those games and more at betonline.ag. Use our code BELIEVE for 50% matching on your first deposit, um, and we'll see how AAA does. He's way better at this than me, so trust his picks over mine, uh, but it's always fun to talk about these games. Yeah, it is uh, It is definitely fun, and I am better than you on these picks. I was 9-5 okay, okay. last year. I'm playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> Nine and five is pretty solid. That could make you some money if you put the, you know, put something down there. So, yeah, uh, pretty solid there. You were six and eight last week, so you're improving. I'd have Head to go right back direction. and like, look at a, look at a couple of others, but yeah, man, it, it's the it's the over under. It's the it's the spread that's getting us. That's the look, one that gets us. Look, this is the last week. If I, it's another disaster next week, I'm gonna make my picks. And then I'm going to go exact opposite and see if that works. Cause I think that might be the way to do it. Just go, just fade me and go the other way. Yeah, that works. I guess you would have technically been eight and six going against Brian's picks last week. So bet with me. Don't bet with Brian. And regardless, bet online at betonline.ag. <laughs> Thanks for checking out our picks episode. I love doing this. I don't know how much uh, you guys trust our picks, but it's fun to talk about the other teams outside of the commanders as well. Um, you can check this out on TuneIn and SiriusXM. And as always, we appreciate those guys at Bet Online for bringing you the show. We will talk to you uh, on Monday or Tuesday to talk about the Commanders game that hopefully they win in Indy and they're sitting at 500. Uh, AAA, it's been fun as always. We'll see you next time. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Have a good one.